Hi everyone, I just wanted to share my weight loss journey with you. Just to give you a little background information, it all began in 2020 on the verge of the pandemic. My whole family contracted COVID. My husband became really, really sick. The doctors, they didn't want to touch him. I had taken him to several doctor's appointments. They just kept sending him home. They told me to feed him pasta, spaghetti sauce, anything that made him happy, basically. And he was diabetic, mind you. So I debated with them that I didn't want to do that. So I was trying to feed him healthy things like vegetables, eggs, anything with proteins that would potentially help him. He became sicker and sicker, and then he went into respiratory failure. He was, he had COVID delirium, and he became projectile with his vomits, and he wasn't holding anything down. So I decided against the medical advice that I was receiving that it was urgent that he needed to get to the hospital immediately. So we drove him to a hospital to which they didn't let me come inside. They released him from the hospital because he refused to stay. Even though he was incapacitated in his mind, he came out to the car, barely breathing, barely staying awake, and told my son to drive me home, drive him home. I said, no, your dad's gonna die. You cannot drive him home. So I got out of the car, I called 911, argued with 911 because they didn't want to come get him. So then I get back in the car and I say, just leave me here. We are an hour away from home. I said, just leave me here in the dark by myself because I'm not going to watch you die. So my husband, you know, he wakes up for a brief moment and says, you're not going to stop, are you? You're not going to give up. And I was like, no, I told you I'm never going to give up on you. So then he goes, okay, fine, fine. So we get to another hospital. I go inside. They tell me the same thing. If patient refuses to stay, we can't force him. So they were like, do you think that he'll get in the wheelchair? If he gets in the wheelchair, then we can take him. So I go out to the, we put it, we take the wheelchair and we go out to the car. And I say, get your butt in the car now. So he listened to me and got in the wheelchair and went in. And immediately, like within five minutes, he started coding in the trauma center to which they told me, you need to leave the trauma center and you need to go home and we'll call you tomorrow. So I get up the next day. Or no, I get home that night and I just hit the floor like I'm in tears and I'm praying. I'm like, God, please, please save my husband. And the next day we get a call from them saying that they were able to save him. He ended up coming home a couple weeks later. They had to like, you know, get some of his numbers up and he ended up coming home. So then my, fin my husband finally comes home only to have my father become sick and he's admitted to the hospital. It was like a four month struggle. He was very, very sick with COVID and other um, ailments that he had, medical conditions that occurred while he was hospitalized. One day I had to finally let my father go. So we buried him. Then we were getting back to um, life and um, I decided that, you know, it was scary when my husband almost died because I had been a photographer before, but now I don't want to go around people, big groups of people because I don't want to get sick again. So I decided that, you know, I want to do um, home delivery service for groceries. One day things are going good. I'm making a lot of money. And I fall on someone's porch while I'm doing a delivery. I acquired a double compound fracture. Bone came out of the skin on my ankle. Emergency text held me down. It burned my skin. I had second degree burns. So I was bedridden for a long time. It took a long time to heal. They said that I may never walk again. Fast forward to a couple months later, my grandma started going downhill. So I knew that I needed to get to my grandma because it was important that I spent time. Even though, 
even though I was bedridden, I knew that I just needed to get to grandma and spend time with her. So we went to see grandma. And then I get a call that same day because my mother was at work. And she's like, Nikki, please come see me. So I was like, I don't know how I'm going to even get the energy. I couldn't even get into the house in the walker because I was falling. I almost fell into the bush because I could barely walk. And I was in so much pain. So we decided to go see my mom that day. I couldn't even go into her work, but she came out to the car and she gave me a hug. And she's like, I just want you to know that I love you so much from the bottom of my heart. And it was just genuine that experience with my mother that day just reassuring me of a mother's love so we got home that day and I was just completely wiped out and exhausted and pain and a couple days later we received a call from my brother saying that my mother was in the ICU she had been admitted because she too contracted COVID they didn't think that she was going to make it but they were trying to save her a few days later after that My brother called me saying that we were going to have to unplug my mom from life support. And so we lost my mom too. Then fast forward to her service, which was probably like a month later. My grandma was going downhill, so she couldn't couldn't even come to the funeral because she was in the hospital. And they sent her home on hospice care and she died like three days after that so after that had happened in my life my husband decided that he needed a change in his career and that he had promised my father that he was going to buy me a house so we found a beautiful house in valley springs which was about two hours away from where we were living so we went to look and for the first time in my life I saw I drove through that neighborhood and I just cried like these tears of joy it was such a beautiful development so we decided to move there I still at this point was learning to walk properly so we decided to move I've since decided to open up a bakery which I successfully did. And now we have a food truck. So after a couple doctor's visits, the doctor kept telling me, you're pre-diabetic, you're pre-diabetic. And I just never wanted to listen. I was drinking, I was eating whatever I wanted. And I think it contributed to a lot of the pain that I had experienced. So I was just eating to ease the pain and I had gained a lot of weight. So finally, a couple months ago, I went to the doctor and he told me, you're diabetic. That was a real big wake up call for me because I didn't want to die. I didn't want to be a prisoner to my body because I had damaged my body like my family members. So I decided at that point that I had heard a lot about this product called Ozempic. So in May, I believe, of 2024, I decided to try Ozempic, and it's been nothing but a life changer for me. It's regulated my blood sugar. It's, um, con- it's helped me control. You know, I've had to change a lot of my patterns. I've had to, like, eat proper and learn how to eat and not eat out of impulse or emotion. I had to stop drinking. I had to put all that aside for my health. Since I started on this Ozempic journey, I've lost 25 pounds in a couple of months. I have about 75 pounds to meet my first big goal, but I like to think of it in like small steps, small goals, one day at a time, one pound at a time. But I just wanted to share my story And just let others know that regardless of what they say, regardless of what the doctors say, they say you can't walk, they say you can't do something. You just get up and you put one foot in front of the other and you take one step at a time. You lose one pound at a time until you reach your goal, until you're finally walking, until you're finally running. But anyways, I just wanted to share and you guys just have a blessed day. Thank you for listening.